Hi, it's Mike. Welcome back to another uh, show on Above the Reef. And yes, you'll notice it is a different name from our previous videos. And the reason is uh, we kind of ran into a little bit of an issue with some naming here and there. So, um, you know, we thought about it and we thought Above the Reef fits what we're doing because that's where we are, right? We're Above the Reef in everything we do. So, uh, welcome to the new name, Above the Reef. Today, we're going to talk about corals. Uh, we're going to answer the question a lot of people have is where do corals come from? Uh, they certainly don't come from two corals getting together, courting each other, and getting married and having babies. That's not how that works. Uh, there's certainly not a stork that brings you these corals either. Uh, we have four different ways that we can get corals. One of them being uh, wild caught, as you can see in this picture here. Uh, one of them being aquacultured, as you can see in this picture. And uh, mariculture, which is kind of an offshoot of aquaculturing. And we're going to use those two names to delineate what they are. And in this picture here, you can see the, the maricultured. And of course, down in this picture here, on the left, you, uh, hobbyists is where we can get these types of corals. So when we look at these corals, wild caught is exactly what it says, right? They're wild caught, they're, they're in the ocean. People go out there, they break them off the reefs, and uh, it's not good for the reefs. Uh, that's one of the cons with it. We're taking sometimes full colonies off of a reef for the hobby. Yeah, they can be cheaper, uh, but the thing is, you're destroying the reef. You have a real potential for pests and disease that can come into your tank, especially if they're not um, dipped and acclimated, maybe even quarantined to make sure you're not getting any of those. Um, now these corals, they're caught in Fiji, Bali, Australia. Um, and they're shipped across the world. Uh, you know, so if I had to say one coral not to get, that's it. Don't do the wild caught if you can help it. You know, our reefs are already in a huge decline and we need to save these reefs. Uh, so the next type of coral that we have, we want to talk about is our mariculture. These are technically wild grown. Uh, they go out into the ocean, they have these huge farms where they've taken racks of some type and they put them in the ocean in these shallow areas. Again, in a lot of the same areas where we're getting our wild caught from. Then they're harvesting these for the trade. Again, a bit cheaper than your other types of corals, but they still can have the pests, the disease that these corals can bring in. Uh, a nice thing about them though, is they can uh, be used to regrow the reefs that we've destroyed through over harvesting, um, climate change, damage from storms. So there are benefits to having uh, these maricultured types of corals. Uh, the next type of coral that we have, and now we're getting down the range of where the best way to get our corals is, and that's from uh, the aquaculture. And the aquaculture uh, are corals that are grown in facilities. And you'll see that they're, they're large tanks, that they, they propagate these corals themselves, they, they frag them, they grow them. Uh, now we're starting to get a little more expensive with these types of corals, but we're not taking anything off the reefs. We're not destroying any reefs. Um, they're sustainable because we're growing them ourselves and it just makes for a better trade. Uh, so now if I had to say this is where you want to get your corals, absolutely. Uh, we have less chance for pests and disease. I can't say they're hundred percent. Nobody can really say that for sure, but the odds are that you're going to get a less chance for diseases and pests on these types of corals. Our last type of coral, and in my opinion, this is where to go. This is where we get them from. Uh, these are from the hobbyists. The hobbyists are the ones who are growing them in their tanks. They um, more likely to have, or less likely to have more pests and disease, things like that. They are going to acclimate to your tanks a lot easier, just like aquaculture will, because they're grown under these lights. They're used to these lights. They're used to the normal parameters that we're keeping in our tanks. And you're talking about being sometimes third, fourth generation removed from the mother colony. So these other um, frags have known nothing but the hobby itself. So uh, the hobbyist is the way to go. Price-wise, uh, are they cheaper? Sometimes you get... <laughs> Hobbyists that are very proud of their corals. You get some that are very um, knowledgeable. So they're really going to try to get the prices. Uh, then again, you can pick up some super cheap ones. You know, five dollars a polyp for certain types of, of corals. Uh, so the hobbyist is where is really, in my opinion, one of the best places to get your your corals. 
So in order of uh, where I would suggest you get your corals is, the best place is from a hobbyist. The second place is from your uh, aquaculture facilities. The third place would be your uh, mariculture, which are still wild grown, um, but then your actual wild caught are the ones that are um, at least favorable to get corals. Um, we're not gonna talk anything about you know the types of corals, the LPS, SPS, soft, we're gonna have a, another video series for those. So please make sure you watch out for those. Um, please make sure you subscribe to this video, like this video. If you haven't checked out our other ones, please do so. Uh, the subscriptions and the liking, that's where we get the uh, energy to keep moving on and doing more videos for you. So uh, until next time, we'll see you above the reef.